Hello, this is Chef John from FoodWishes.com with Veracruz Style Red Snapper. That's right, there are so many versions of this very popular Mexican Gulf Coast seafood recipe, but this version is very quick and incredibly vibrant in flavor and color, and it's just a wonderful way to wake up the always yawn-inspiring Red Snapper. So let me show you how to make this. To start, we're going to put a couple tablespoons of olive oil in a pan on medium heat. We're going to add half a diced onion. We're going to throw in a pinch of salt, and we're just going to sweat that on medium heat for about six, seven minutes until it turns translucent. While that's happening, we're going to go ahead and prep the main ingredients, which are tomatoes, olives, and jalapeno. So I'm going to start by slicing up some tomatoes. Usually see this done with diced tomatoes or a tomato sauce. I really like the sweet cherry tomatoes for this. Much nicer flavor. If you can find a variety called Sweet 100s, that's my favorite. But bottom line, we're going to need some kind of tomato product. I'm also going to slice up a jalapeno pepper into rings. I'm going to discard most of the seeds. I don't want it too spicy, but a few might sneak in there. I'm also going to slice up some pitted green olives. I'm using some really fancy hipster foodie olives that I can't remember the name. They start with a C. I think they're Italian. It'll be on the blog post. So we're going to slice those up, and our veggies are ready. By this time, your onions are going to be perfect. So we're going to head back over to the stove, and we're going to dump in some minced garlic. We're going to give that about 30 seconds swirl in the oil. Then a tablespoon of whole capers, plus one tablespoon of the caper brine. Okay, don't be scared. It's fine. All right, so give that a stir. And at that point, we can dump in our tomato, pepper, olive mixture. All right, and we're on medium heat. We're just going to stay in medium the whole way. I'm going to switch to a spoon here. And I'm just going to kind of stir this over the heat for about three minutes, I'm going to guess. And all we want to happen are those peppers to soften ever so slightly. And those tomatoes are just going to start to collapse. And like I said earlier, this is usually done with canned tomatoes or fresh tomato sauce. But I really love the cherry tomatoes. You get that aroma of fresh tomato leaves that you just don't get with the other products. So like I said, we're just going to stir that until the tomatoes start to collapse. And when it looks like that, stop. Turn off the heat and we're going to stir in some fresh oregano. Once that's stirred in, just set it aside and it's on to the fish prep, which is so easy. And why that's so easy is because we're using trimmed, boneless, red snapper fillets. Those are about seven ounces each. And we're going to cut those in half, but not quite in half. I want you to make the thicker end of the fillet the slightly larger half. So 60-40 with the thinner tail piece being the 40% part. And you'll see why in a second. If you're not great at math, no worries. Just cut them in half. And we're ready for final assembly. So I'm going to get my pans ready. I'm using these small individual metal baking pans. I love these things. Super cheap. Get them at any restaurant supply store. And as you'll see, they work great. This can also be done in a casserole dish, which I'll talk about on the blog. So I'm going to lightly olive oil those. Except I didn't. I put too much in. So I wiped some out with a paper towel. Do not be stubborn in the kitchen. When you screw up, fix it. So I want a little bit of olive oil. And then we're going to start layering. I'm going to place a spoon of the vegetable mixture in the bottom topped with the smaller, thinner half of our fish. We're going to season that with black pepper, cayenne, and salt. We're going to cover that with a little bit more of the pepper, tomato, olive mixture. And then that layer gets finished with some freshly squeezed lime juice. So we're going to use one lime per order here. Half goes on this layer, half goes on the top. So we're going to squeeze over that half a lime. We're going to top with the larger second piece of the fish. Again with the pepper, again with the cayenne, and again with the salt. All right. The other half of the lime. And then finally, we're going to top it with the onion, olive, tomato, pepper mixture. By the way, how gorgeous is that? You just know when it looks this good before it's cooked, how amazing it's going to look after it's cooked. It's almost too much to wait. So I did the same thing to my other piece of fish. And when I was done, any extra veggies, I just divided evenly amongst the two pans. And those are ready for the oven, which is going to be a hot oven. We're going to roast these at 425 for between 15 and 20 minutes, depending on lots of things. Your oven, the shape, size of the fish, the pan you used, etc. But basically what you're looking for is for that red snapper to flake easily when you stick a fork into it. Now I'm going to show you that when I eat mine because I don't want to wreck it because I didn't take any pictures yet. So I had to take my beauty shots first. There you go. So I'm going to place this on a napkin on a plate next to some blue corn chips. I love this next to chips. I don't even serve a side. That's my starch. It's like a one dish meal. In fact, parents, you can call this fish nachos. The kids will love it. And there you go. Veracruz style fish. Now that we've feasted our eyes on the beautiness of it, let me take the fork and show you what I meant by flaking. The meat should just break off in large succulent pieces. 
It should be moist and it should be permeated with all those amazing flavors. I mean, the way the sweet onions and tomatoes play off the briny, sharp olives and peppers is just magical. All right, and right here you can really see the flakiness. It's almost too perfect. That'll happen sometimes. And like I said, I love to serve this with tortilla chips or just regular tortillas to scoop up all that juicy vegetable goodness. It's so incredible. So I really hope you give this a try. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.